My name is Sophia Lubavitch, and I believe that everyone should be in mourning. I am a mourner by nature, though I must make it clear that I'm not presently in a state of active mourning. Nonetheless, I consistently find myself serially mourning the world around me. At an extremely young age, we develop expectations for the world. We ascribe excessive meaning and importance to things long before we truly experience them because of this universal yet idiomatic need to live a life full of significance. If we live a life in which we don't attach our emotional selves to anybody or anything, we leave ourselves open to less hurt, but more noteworthily, to less love and less of any of the intensities of the human condition. Mourning, in its essence, embodies this paradox. Mourning is a lifelong phase that extends until one can accept that you can't always do everything and appease everyone, and that the only path to this acceptance is embracement. An embracement of a relinquishment of control entails acknowledging the inherent limits of our knowledge and our understanding of our time and of our energies. It's a process that extends beyond the immediate aftermath of loss, permeating our lives as we come to terms with the inherent uncertainties of being human. As I grapple with this realization, I find myself captivated by mourning, a phase characterized by the difficult difficulties in letting go. The first piece I started this year was a project with homemade paper made up of various forms of garlic, which I'll get into later, shredded diary entries, and household papers in which I have blueprints of important places to me out of, trying to unpack the idea of losing homes. I moved to three different places in the last two years, and in the same stretch, my grandparents sold their home, which had always been a safer place for me. And so, my first piece exploring mourning looks specifically at the mourning of a home. As shifting so many spaces in such a short period of time made me realize that it is just so easy to get attached to abandoned objects and places rather than just people. The first things I was ever attached to and first mourned were places, items, and even memories that just felt safe to me, that felt like home. To make the process more personal, I attempted to merge this universal idea with my family's personal history within the protected traditions of my culture. Employing Jewish paper cutting techniques, I wanted to safeguard the memories encapsulated in each piece, and by using this handmade protective paper infused with the essence of garlic, which I used because it's a symbol deeply rooted in ancient protection rituals, I felt morally connected to the paper. I do this to try and fill this need I have to protect cherished memories, whether they are first-hand experiences or inherited family recollections, ensuring their safekeeping for generations to come. I've been working on layered narratives inspired by the Kabbalistic idea of the multi-layered Torah, which states that there are essentially four layers of understanding existence in important texts. The literal, the allegorical, the comparative, and the secret. I incorporated these four layers into photographs of Jewish youth, layered with cutouts, visually exploring stories associated with the subject's heritage. Another layer is a written response to the question, how do you or do you not feel connected to your roots, on the back of the print, allowing the subject to explore identity through what I see as an act of catharsis and vulnerability. I made these pieces while profoundly struggling to understand this longing for too much knowledge. I've been working on capturing the essence of this moment in time, rather than getting stuck, capturing a whole comprehensive past before I could move on. Growth for the future is equally as important as protection of the past. My next series, Crystalline Armor, ties into this idea and consists of crystals that I grew around a childhood toy over a period of 18 days, or chai, which is derived from the Hebrew word meaning life, symbolizing vitality and resilience. This was a way for me to explore self-shielding as a protection mechanism, reflecting my own journey of allowing life to unfold naturally instead of dwelling on the past. It is impossible to fully capture what once was, therefore embracing change and recognizing it as a guide is how I've learned to move forward. Just as these crystals grow beyond my influence and expand on objects with so much history, so does life and its perpetual unpredictability. I expanded this and started growing crystals over family pass downs in my possession thereby intertwining tangible remnants of history with uncontrollable growth, 
encasing salvaged family stories and items in these self-forming crystals, which serve as conduits for the complex emotions, experiences, and energies embedded within these objects. I've struggled with mourning, not knowing enough about the people around me and about my ancestors, and a way I've been able to grapple with that is through reworking my own memories, allowing for growth and for healing. Well, it doesn't change the fact that I really can't ever learn everything I want to or feel that I need to. I'm attempting to connect with both places and people and their histories through my work, which helps me to feel as though I'm forging deeper bonds with my own ancestors. My artwork is a time-based medium, serving as a record of emotion while also helping me untangle the past. Mourning is a vessel for creativity. It serves as a tool for me to navigate the ethical conundrum I constantly face of how one best contributes to the world. Is it through um, perpetual remembrance and immersion in history, thereby learning from past experiences and paying homage to those who came before us? Or is it through embracing the vibrancy of the present moment, directing our energy towards the here and now? Or is it both? You can't capture mortality in your hands, but you can try to seize it through art. Art encapsulates our collective human experiences, fundamentally grappling with the question, how we navigate life from what we do can never be enough. And I found that this question is a fundamental truth of our humanity. We try and we fail, and in failure lies mourning, and in acceptance of this mourning lies the triumph. I'm trying to accept where I am in this process, well, fundamentally failing. But this failure is not a negative thing. While our innate desire for significance leads us through a continuous cycle of mourning, it also reminds us to take in the transitory nature of life with intentions of perception and of gratitude. So with that, thank you so much for listening and enjoy the rest of these amazing art talks. <laughs>